we'll move beyond AI as just something that can generate our code to a world of autonomous agents. Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bhartia and we are back with our predictions video series. Today we have with us Joe Duffy, founder and CEO of Bloomy. Joe, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you, Swapnil. Uh, before we start predictions, let's quickly talk about Bloomy. Tell us a bit about the company. Plumi is best known as, you know, our infrastructure's code technology, which is open source. And, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of end users using that now to provision resources on AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, Kubernetes, and, you know, over 150 other clouds. We've recently moved more into uh, being a more, you know, broader cloud management platform for things like secrets and configuration management, policy as code, in addition to infrastructure as code. Um, and, you know, we were founded seven years ago and have over 2,000 customers and grown fast. Excellent. Thank you. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and share your predictions with us. Yeah, always, always a dangerous thing to do. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, some of these will not be controversial. I would say the first one is I, we actually see a re-acceleration in cloud adoption. And a lot of that's being driven by AI. You know, when I think of AI, I think of infinite compute infinite data requirements, and there's nothing better for those things than the cloud. Uh, and so I think 2024, we'll see even more cloud adoption, despite, you know, the macroeconomic situation still being a little bit rocky. So that, that's the first prediction is cloud will be bigger than ever before in uh, 2024. Um, I think the second one, you know, I think Kubernetes has sort of won the container wars, if you will. And so I think we'll, we'll, we'll talk a lot less about Kubernetes in 2024. But I think what we will talk a lot more about is the fact that the developer experience for the cloud is still very poor. Uh, I think it's still, despite Kubernetes having helped with a lot of these challenges in the cloud, uh, I think um, the developer experience is still something people are trying to improve and chasing and, and it will, but I think it will remain elusive in 2024, despite all of us working really, really hard at it. And hopefully it's something we can tackle in 2025. Um, but I think that's the, the, the second prediction. I think the third, you know, you'll, you'll hear me talking a fair bit about AI in this quick chat, but I think AI will experience at least two major step functions of improvement this coming year. I think last year was insane, you know, with chat GPT progress and people applying that to a lot of new domains. But I think we'll see at least two major step functions with, you know, chat uh, GPT-5 and, and further improvements. And I think that will continue to just completely change the way we approach software development. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a, a second. But I think, you know, everything from how we write the code, to how we design it and architect it, to how we deploy it in the cloud, I think all aspects of the software development lifecycle will be impacted by AI. Uh, increasingly in 2024. And that leads to my fourth and final prediction, which is we'll move beyond AI as just something that can generate our code to a world of autonomous agents. And that's something we're really excited about. I think of, you know, imagine you have a number of, you know, autonomous DevOps uh, assistants that are just autonomously doing good things on your behalf in the cloud. That's something we're excited to, to be doing. Um, but I think more broadly in the industry, we'll move beyond just, you know, the chat interface to richer interfaces uh, to the AIs uh, and, and them increasingly just kind of doing stuff on our behalf rather than being entirely triggered by human prompting. What kind of challenges you see are going to be still here from previous years? And you see these kind of new challenges will emerge for a much larger ecosystem and then for Plumi to help the, the users navigate through those challenges. Yeah, I think despite all of those predictions, and I think, you know, I do think they'll come true, I, I think we'll still struggle with two main areas. And I'm mostly focused on cloud, right? Because that's what Plumi is all about is the cloud and, you know, software development in the cloud. I think the first one is that developer experience is still not great. Uh, you know, we're still writing code for the cloud like we did, you know, 10, 15 years ago in the world of virtual machines, despite the cloud ushering in the era of distributed computing. And, you know, with infinite data, infinite compute, there's so much more we could be doing. And yet most organizations I talk to are trying to really insulate developers from the cloud for good reason. And that's going to tie into my second challenge that I'll talk about in a second, but um, which is security and making sure things are secure by default. 
but that developer experience is still nowhere near where it needs to get to be. And like, you know, I, I know a lot of great startups that are working on this. I, I think of a lot of startups that we've heard of, a lot of new folks who have started companies recently to tackle this. But I, I don't think anybody's really solved this problem. And until we do, the cloud is still going to be sort of an afterthought for many developers. Um, but that second one is everything I talked about with AI and developer experience. And no matter what we do in the cloud, it has to be secure. It needs to be compliant. It needs to follow sort of the, the, the enterprise requirements. And things are not secure by default still to this day. Um, and I think that's, you know, I, I experienced this, honestly, I'll date myself, but back in the 90s with just general software development in the tr trustworthy computing era where there were, you know, bugs uh, and viruses and worms and things all the time um, that were security problems. And we still have that in the cloud. You know, it's still too easy to open an S3 bucket to the internet or expose an endpoint accidentally. And, you know, secure by default, we're not yet there. A lot of people are working on that. Um, but I think, you know, even in 2024, I don't think we will have solved that problem, unfortunately. Uh, we'll make some good progress. We all agree it's important, but it's still a big challenge. And if you look at these challenges, what is going to be your focus? What is going to be the focus of Polomi? Yeah, I think first and foremost, we're, we still want to be the industry leading infrastructure as code technology. I mentioned we're 2000 customers. I would love for that to be 5000 by the end of this year. Um, you know, that's we're really picking up steam in terms of people thinking of infrastructure as code and, and Pulumi is sort of being the, the default choice in that in that space. Um, I think increasingly applying AI, we, we've already launched some AI technology last year, which is incredible. You know, Pulumi.com slash AI, we've got this uh, code generation bot. But like I mentioned, uh, moving beyond just code generation to autonomous agents who can actually manage infrastructure activities on your behalf, that's going to be a huge focus uh, for us. Uh, and then continuing to expand the product line. You know, we went from being a single technology, infrastructure as code, to being more of an infrastructure management suite. Uh, and we're going to continue going down that path, uh, especially for our big enterprise customers. There's just so many problems that we see that we can solve. Uh, for them. So we'll we'll keep doing that. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for taking time out today and share your predictions with us. And of course, I'd love to have you back on the show again next year to get the next set of predictions and also see how many of your predictions turn out to be true. But we should not wait for the whole long year. I look forward to seeing you before that at KubeCon as well. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. We'll see how we do it a year from now and see you at KubeCon. Thanks for the mail.